Welcome, all you beautiful people, to high school esports playoffs. Unfortunately, the first match was not streamed because of some difficulties getting a hold of the first team. But you know what? We're going to be streaming the second match of the semifinals, and it's going to be against Blue Springs High School and Fleetwood Park Secondary. Their team names are Top, Top Dongers and Ruby and Friends. I am yeah. joined by a new I am joined by a new caster. Uh, you may have remembered, I believe his name was. Wow, I completely forgot. I'm so sorry to him. But I'm joined by Sword. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And actually, the name I believe you're thinking of was Pyrotechnics. He is a good friend of mine. He got in contact to me about this, and so I'm gonna help cast this awesome high school game with Dish Fresh or Dish Fresh. Sorry, I just like too early. Too early for me. Too early for me. <laughs> But okay. yeah, I'm ready no, to no, cast some uh, games. No, uh, I cast it with Pyrotechnics about two, two to three weeks ago. Uh, there was a, actually a different caster last week that I cast it with. Mm. I can't remember his name. I don't right think now. I can help you there. I'm sorry. So yeah, it, it's been a long path for all of these players it's been actually it's been about a couple of weeks about two months um they've been playing in this tournament and they finally made it to playoffs they've all had some pretty difficult matches i gotta say i'm looking through their their um conference stages and uh, there's a lot a lot of them uh, had some pretty decisive wins uh and then a couple of them actually had to play through some tiebreakers to get where they are right now well, Dish, I'm ready to see what these teams are capable of. I did my scouting, I guess you can say, already in advance. So, whenever... Beautiful. So, we are already in the rift right now, and we're going to see the first band go down, I believe, in just a little bit of time. So, right now, if I'm not mistaken, they're in chronological order from top to support for both teams. Yeah. Yep, they are in standard LCS order, top jungle, mid, AD carry, and support. Uh, that's good. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about this first ban. Uh, this Fizz ban is very targeted to King in to the top. If I saw all his solo queue, and he is a god like Fizz top. And that is putting it lightly. So he is like the next Lucy team 8 right here material, but sadly we're not going to see that awesome Fizz top pick. And they're actually going target bans for him. Another J oh, yeah, band and the Lux. The, yep. It seems as though both of these teams really just want to focus down that mid lane and prevent the mid laners from just snowballing out of control. And that's really a, that's a pretty smart strategy right there. You force them onto champions that they may be uncomfortable with, and then you put the jungle pressure in there, and then at that point it's just whichever team can give their mid laner more pressure. Uh, will have evidently be able to snowball it into mid and hopefully even late game. No, it's not even just that. Right now, from the looks of it, they are banning out King in the top. Yes, Jace and Fizz are mid pick, but on top of that, they're top picks as well. I'll we'll have to see, though. And it's going to be a Lee Sin. I'm not too sure. Trend K, you said you did your research. What do you have on him on the Lee Sin? Ooh, Trend K. Trend K actually... From what I've seen, he's a pretty good Lee Sin. He creates pressure around the map as well as warding. If I'm not mistaken, he wards up the jungle quite a bit. Not even just the jungle, the lanes. So he doesn't just create pressure through lanes. He creates pressure through the map. So just banning that out for Tran K was very big in that sense. But we also see the Maokai ban go down. That's going to prevent Snow Leopard from being able to go that tree in the top lane. Because we know that... Uh, sorry, Top Donger, they have a very strong team fight. They love to team fight, and you know, taking that away is a little bit of a kicker, but it's okay. They're going to pick up that first pick, Kha'Zix, for CJR Cool, and I know he's a good Kha'Zix player. He does play Riven Jungle sometimes, but I guess he doesn't want to whip it out. He's going to go with a safe pick of Kha'Zix, and that's very good, especially since Kha'Zix has great clear time, and the assassination attempts that he can do are amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, they're going to answer that Kha'Zix pick with a Jarvan pick, 
And Jarwin's really known to have a lot of early jungle pressure, along with pretty decent ganking potential with the flag and drag. And Kha'Zix, he'll it'll take a bit for him, possibly even level 6 before we'll see him start getting rolling, unless he can get some easy kills um, off of the ganks. Well, we're going to have to see about that, because there are many ways to build Kha'Zix jungle now that... By that, I mean evolutions, actually, surprisingly enough. So, anyways, talking about the Janna pick as well, Janna is an interesting champ to go as, especially if you want to go a more passive lane. She she is great for disengage as well, which is, I would say, good in this sense, because they need a little bit of disengage from that engage from J4. But the interesting pick I want to talk about right now, or not even pick, Hover, is the Soraka. Soraka... Like, I've seen Janna top, I've seen Janna mid, but I believe this is a Soraka mid. And you know what? Soraka mid is broken. Ah, uh, he just, like, blew up my bubble. Wow. I'm kind of sad about that. Well, now. I mean, Soraka mid, Soraka mid was pretty powerful until her complete rework. After that, you don't really see her in the mid lane anymore. She has pretty subpar wave clear, and her dueling potential is all but gone. She can't even heal herself for some self-sustain in the lane. They've essentially moved her to a permanent support role. Yeah, she also does have that Q, though, to heal her back instead of that now. So the way that Raka works is a little different from before. But again, she she wasn't meant to go mid anyway. She was meant to go support. And now we're going to see picks getting the final two picks Sorry, on blue side, which is going to be the Mundo getting hovered by Soggy Mok train which would be their top laner and you know mundo's such a great tank he in the late game if he gets to the late game first of all because early game is not gonna lie it's trouble for mundo mundo can get outscaled he can get out damaged he can pretty much lose the lane just from dying a few times but if he can make it to that late game stage he's just gonna be a tank rolling in to uh, the front line, into the back line, being like, hit me, hit me, hit me. You can't take me down. I have an ult that regens faster than you can kill me. So it's kind of like sort of online kind of thing. You know, you hit me, but I heal faster than you can inflict wounds kind of thing. I've never seen sort of online, so oh, that's such a good anime. Such a good anime. Such a good anime. But, anyways, we're yeah. going to see this lock pick go down. It's going to be pretty interesting to see what they're going to do to answer that Mundo pick. Nidalee would be a fairly good choice because she her she's just a lot stronger. Uh, in if, if you build her as a bruiser now, you you do see some AP Nidalees, but you, they usually go for the bruiser path. And I got to say, she has a lot more percentage damage, and that could pro, uh, pose to be a problem for the Mundo. The support pick for top dongers does look to be Brom. So the bot lane has been locked in, and there we go. It's actually going to be that Nidalee in the top lane. Actually, something that I want to talk about about Nidalee is uh, the recent changes she got. She did get nerfed a little while back, I believe in patch 4.18. So that ED ratio did get lowered quite a bit in her uh, basic attacks, her Q, I believe also her swipe. So now a lot of people, this includes not just pros, but also high ranked people like to play AP Nidalee top now because they feel like that's a little stronger than AD. But I guess we're going to have to see what Kenyon in the top actually does because I have not seen him play Nidalee. I have not seen that in his recent champion pool. I haven't seen that anywhere, to be honest. And it's interesting enough that they made him last pick. So I'm pretty sure they're going to try to make King in the top. They're going to focus their priority there, which means you might see a lot of ganks top. Well, the thing is, it, you actually might be right on this one. It might actually be a AP Nidalee, because from what I'm seeing from Red Team, from Fleetwood Park Secondary, this looks like a straight poke team, uh, poke comp for me. The Xerath, the Ezreal, and now the Nidalee, it's just so much poke and so much siege pressure that Blue Team, with that Mundo pick, it's going to allow him to soak up a lot of damage. There's so much AP on the side of of Ruby and friends, that Mundo, he's definitely going to be rushing that spirit, uh, the um, spirit massage, guaranteedly. And so, whenever he does get low, he'll just pop his masochism and he'll heal it all back up and he'll just continue tanking it up. 
it's just strange to me that they decided to go for the Jarvan pick instead of someone a little bit more tankier and to stay as a front line. Jarvan, sure, he'll be fairly tanky, but I feel as though a true tank uh, in the jungle, maybe a Nautilus, the Mal they did ban out the Maokai away, so they couldn't have that option. Uh, but as it is, they are fairly squishy. And if Nilly does go AP in instead of Bruiser, then Jarvan will be the only person... Uh, that will have to take the brunt of the damage from Kha'Zix, Ziggs, and Corky. We also have to remember, though, the disengage from uh, Fleet Park or Ruby and Friends are very strong. You have the pounce to get away. You have the flag and grab to get away. You also have J4's alt cataclysm to help get away. Stunned by Zerath, Arcane Shift by Ezreal, huge disengage alt by Janna, Tornado by Janna. Slow by Janna. You have the disengage there to run away, but they're going J4 more for kind of get the lanes ahead. Because if you look at the lanes for uh, Blue Springs, sorry, Blue String or Blue Springs High School, they have more lane bullies like Ziggs, Corky, and Brom. That's a pretty big lane, uh, especially since they're going to have to play extremely passive on the side of Ruby and friends. But the only lane. That is not really, oh yeah, I'm going to bully you till level 6 or till you outscale me. No, that's the only lane that's not like that is X no Leopard. And Leopard against King in the Top, again, like I said, they let King of the Top, or King in the Top, sorry, choose the last. So, again, I believe that they're going to go and try to get King in the Top ahead as possible. Or Trank might go around again, make his roots. Because most of the lanes will get pushed up very easily. So CJR Cool will most likely just, you know, farm up the jungle, maybe go for a gank or two if they're pushed in or if he sees an opportunity. But the opportunity will be more in Trank K's opportunity because, again, like I said, lane bullies, they're going to push up the lane ahead. Trank K is going to be able to go behind very easily. Uh, but, you know, that's why J4 is picked because he's such great at early ganking. Flying grabs all you need to really get that knockup, get that engage in, and he also does have a slow with his shield. So we're going to have to see exactly what's happening or happening here while we load into the game, and I get to see my favorite part: the skins from both these teams. All right, and like you said, since it is your favorite part, I will allow you the opportunity to just announce these teams. <sighs> I'm warm enough for this. I'm ready for this. All right. So, right now, on the side of Top Donger, if I'm not mistaken, it's TPA Mundo, Guardian of the Saints, Kha'Zix, Snow Day, Ziggs, Fnatic, Corky, and Dragon Slayer, Braum to make a Team 5 skin. But now, on to the side of Ruby and Friends, we see Warning King, J4, TPA, Ezreal, and that is all, only two skins. So, Skin War obviously goes to the one, the only, uh, <laughs> Top donger and they top dongers. Top dongers, sorry, but I love that snow day zig skin. I have to give the MVP to that, even though TP Ezreal is a classic. I don't know, man. Uh, Warren King's Jarvan. It, it's a shout out to um, wow. What is the game? I forgot it's called. Wow. Oh my god. I forgot the name. I actually Do you remember? Can't. I don't know. I never knew that it was like a game reference, to be honest. It it is. It, I think it's called. I think it is called War and Kingdoms. I think the game itself is called War and Kingdoms. Wow. Okay. I never knew. I thought it was because it came out during Chinese New Year. So I was like, oh, okay. Like, sweet. We get like a new Chinese New Year skin. I never actually thought about that twice. <laughs> uh, uh. It's. Oh, uh, it's. I know it references a game, but I. For some reason, I just can't. Dynasty Warriors. There we go. It references Dynasty Warriors. And it's hmm. such a good game. Yeah. Like, I, look, I, look at that face. Like, I am look, looking look at, at that the face, face on game. Jarvan's breastplate. Like, on Jarvan's breastplate, like, th that, like, inspires fear. That, like, inspires fear in the enemy. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess you are right. I mean,. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I have nightmares at night about that. So, I mean, I, you just caused me more nightmares. Thank you. Meanie. No problem, no problem. But we are in game. And something I really badly want to point out 
that I didn't notice when before we were loading into the game was no ignite, no ignite on the side of red side, that, and that's going to be huge, honestly, especially since Mundo needs true damage. Honestly, I just I just saw that as well as you, and that could prove to be a huge boon in red team side they desperately need that ignite because if once mundo gets that spear visage it's going to be extremely difficult to kill and like you said with the lack of true damage he's just gonna be able to tank so much damage he'll essentially have two lives and then if and when he does get a ga it's gonna be even more difficult to kill him so, so the reading are behind in the rip that and like we, are, yeah, we are in the rift, and def we have a defensive line just coming out from both of these teams. Red team, they're just putting out some wards, making sure that we don't see any cheeky invades coming out. And it doesn't look as though it's going to be... Uh, we're going to see that situation. Both teams looking to just start their uh, buffs and just go off from there. Yeah, and you know what? Um... Again, it looks like they're not going to start. From the way that they're both looking, they're both starting on their bottom side buff. So Kha'Zix starting with red buff first instead of blue. J4 starting with blue instead of red. You know, they can go either or. But this tells me, this televises to me, that they're going to make their way top first. So whoever clears faster, in my opinion, is going to be Kha'Zix. He's going to get there first and get first dibs on laning or lane ganking top but again we're gonna have to see while the game actually undertakes and the champions go into their lane yep nearly slowly trying to zone out mundo mundo's farming with those trophies that lane might be dictated to whoever hits level two first a little quick poke going down onto both of those champions but nearly she does have um, access to the minions quite a bit easier. Here comes the second wave and wow. hopefully level 2 along with it. I must say bot lane very nicely uh, played on that side. They are playing their bot lane comp especially the way they're supposed to. Poke the enemy team instead of letting them bully you get level 2 first. And fantastic job getting Corky to waste his health pot first. That is huge on the side of red side. And they're, they're not stopping. Janet's just poking, knocking up, going everywhere on this team, or this blue side bot lane. And again, fantastic job with that. Using their comp to their strength. And I am i won't be, if I'm not mistaken, they are probably going to go in level 3, level 4-ish. But we'll check back in that because J4 is in the top lane and Kha'Zix is not too far behind him. Yep, Jarwin is going for that lane gang. Kha'Zix... He's hesitating around a little bit and looks as though he wants to just jump around over that wall as well. No, he's actually just going to put a ward there and back right off. Yeah, I, I denied actually both linking. I believe, I don't know if there was exactly a ward in that tribush. No. So I believe what happened was Mundo foresaw J4 ganking. So he kind of was like, oh, I'm a little hesitant. I'm not going to go in. But bot lane. Oh, Corky oh. is so level low. One more auto attack will take the kill, but the heal will keep him alive. Meanwhile, Ezreal has been exhausted by the Braum, and he has to get out. He did take two tower shots. Unfortunately, Corky, he has to go back right now. And this lane is Ezreal's. With a 22 yeah. CS lead compared to Corky's 12, it's looking really good uh, for this Fleetwood Park. Now, I did say the passive lane is working out very strong, but it doesn't even seem like these lane bullies are having effects on anybody. We see Nidalee winning her lane very, very dominantly, even though at first it seemed like Mundo was going to have the edge. No, it turned out to be King on in the top getting the edge. Then we see Pro going against a Ziggs. Oh, he's going to get bullied out a bit. No, he's going to poke out OMG OP and... Get lane dominance over that. Oh, you know, Corky, Braum, they're pretty strong bot lane. No! Our light and Tishuma is a lot stronger with their poke comp. They can go aggressive whenever they want. They can go passive whenever they want. And right now we see lane dominance in farm right now on the red side. And 
it's very impressive, especially since they're going, again, against lane bullies. I can't go against that enough. They are just playing their lanes, <clears throat> playing their champions exactly how they're supposed to. And this is, in my opinion, complete comfort on the side of red side. And if they keep this up, it looks like they're going to be able to snowball into the late game pretty easily. Yeah, well... Right now, Red Team is getting pushed towards their tower right now, but honestly, this is just looking even better for Ezreal. Not only will the lane be pushed up, he's... One, he'll be able to farm very easily with the Janna Shield and his Mystic Shot, and two, it will open opportunities for Jarvan to get a gank off in the bottom lane. Ooh, in the mid, mid lane. lane. Yeah, speaking of Jarvan gank, Jarvan was right there trying to get a kill onto Ziggs. The flash was blown by OMFG. But he did manage to get out. And that's pretty big, actually. Ziggs only having one sort of disengage, and he's going to have to keep that satchel charge close by. He can't use that carelessly anymore. And top lane, whoa, Mundo going in pretty deep. He's going to ult out, though, and run away from Nidalee. And man, there's fights going left, right, center, but it looks like Red Side's always so close to getting their team kills. One more auto attack will get the stun. There's the Foster's Bomb. The shield from Janna will keep him alive. And now, Janna has taken the brunt of the damage. The heal, will it come out? It's not up. She's going to have to flash away. And the hell pots are barely keeping her alive. And the entire lane has just been rotated in favor of Blue Team. But Jarvan, he's looking for a gank. A ward from Blue Team in that river bush will spot it out. He's going to have to back away. Here comes Kha'Zix. He's looking to spot him out. He's not going to get it. And the thing was, the bigger thing was actually, they saw that blue team was actually not disengaging. And that was because Kha'Zix was ready for the counter gank. He was ready to go and be like, you know what, we have higher health, we can do this better than they can. And he was right, but J4, you know, he's like, I better not do this. I, both my bot lanes low, I feel like they know I'm coming, so I'm just going to back off. He backed off in just in time before Kha'Zix had the jump on him. And since Kha'Zix's passive does or let's Kha'Zix do more damage when they're isolated. I believe that fight would have been in favor of Kha'Zix, even though he just hit six right now. So, again, you just have to be wary where you are, especially since one pick can get blue side rolling very fast. Well, here comes Ziggs and Kha'Zix to the bottom side. Could we see a tower dive? There is a ward in that a little bit tri uh, that tri bush so they know he's there now they're gonna be very careful they're not making any movement to try and get away Ziggs has oh, finally J4. been spotted out Jarvan Jarvan is there along with Zerath but both of those champions have a jump they'll be able to jump the wall and escape any unfortunate doom we also have to keep tabs on top lane because they both are running teleport. They can teleport into the fight anytime they want to. But instead, it looks like blue side's going to use the number of three against the number of two and slowly take down this tower. And actually, it's not going to go down. Instead, they're just going to re return sorry, to their actual lanes. And they're just helping bot lane out, helping, you know, some friends. Because why don't we be friends? Yeah. It was a bit of a fight over that pink ward in that uh, river. I guess single single pixel bush. There's the Howling Gale. Just trying to put a little bit of damage onto the Braum, but you know what? The Unbreakable Wall will keep him healthy enough. Yes, and actually, the jump. top lane. Whoa. Nilly using the jump. Mesa Chism being popped by Mundo. Nilly is so low, oh. and the Void Swax for Kha'Zix will take the kill. Kha'Zix being there at the right time. Mundo activated his uh, W, and you know, that does damage over time. Yes, Burning Agony does hurt Mundo, but it hurts the enemy a little bit more. And Nidalee got caught with also the cleavage throw, or you can say it's trophy throw, whatever you want to say. And she was able to get slowed enough just to like take so much true damage from agonizing burn. And Whoa, King of Top oh, looking to try to get something now. Yeah, with Kha'Zix being spot out of the top lane, they went immediately for oh. the dragon. Unfortunately, it was stolen by the Ziggs. A double uh, a kill onto the Zig. And Nilly managed to take a kill on Kha'Zix. And now, blue team, they're on the defense. There comes the stun from Zerath. 
And they have to disengage. They cannot continue chasing it. And wow. Really? Like I said. It was a smart... It was, it was a smart play by the red team. They Knowing that Kha'Zix in the top lane, they immediately try and go for the dragon. Unfortunately, they didn't take account of Ziggs and just so much damage is coming out from him. Even with only a Chalice, he was easily able to take out Jarvan and steal the dragon from under his nose. Completely misplayed by the Jarvan. He lost his team to Dragon and gave up a kill as well. It wasn't even just that. G4 didn't use his smite at all in that dragon. I believe he thought that would be uncontested since Kha'Zix was top lane. He didn't, again, like you said, take into account the super, or the super mega... Nah, wait, I'm thinking of the wrong... Wrong the ability right bomb. here. Bouncing nope, it bomb. wasn't Bouncing Bomb. It was Mega Inferno Bomb, sorry. I was going to say Super Mega Swag Rock, because I, I don't know. I have that driven into my head. But anyways, uh, they misjudged the damage, and yes, they were able to get kills along the map. It's 3-1. to one. And it looks like Braum actually has the, the bottom of the game fight. onto the red team. There goes the glacial fissure. The Jenna is going to use the monsoon to keep her as her healthy. But now the damage is onto her. One more attack. We'll take her down. The heal will not be enough. Oh no, Ezreal is managed to take down the Corky. And now we'll look to be red blue team having the advantage. Now it's on the red team. Jenna is still extremely low, but they want this. Two more auto attacks should come out. Howling Gale and the Flash do come out from Jenna to try and get the knockup onto Brum, but it's not happening for him. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we do see a gank in the on four red team. Whoa. And there's the trophy, able to take down Nidalee. Wow, okay, so first of all, in the bot lane, it looks like Brom had the right angle onto red side, Ezreal and Janna, but the ties got turned. He didn't block the shield, or he didn't use Unbreakable to block Ezreal's Q's and auto attacks, so he was able to snipe Corky and turn the favor into, uh, turn the angle into his favor, actually. And top lane, Kha'Zix tried to duel the Nidalee. He got killed, Snow Leopard showed up, and he's like, I'm gonna try for a snipe of my own. He sniped Nidalee so well. J4 not able to block that in time, and the Tides, again, get turned into favor. Just a tiny bit, but they, they're still in the favor of blue side. Every gold counts, I would say, right now, and this is a close game. We're going to have to see exactly what's gonna happen between these two teams. In my opinion, I believe right now from the way things are looking blue side is going to have the edge mid game but towards the later game red side is going to be able to get the edge because of their poke comp like you were saying before but again we're going to have to see how this turns out but right now the push towards every lane in some sort of direction here is going to be the battles we're going to witness for now and with Ezra with that one kill over Corky, he has managed to take a little bit of a lead. Nidalee, meanwhile, Whoa, has ganked that mid lane. Unfortunately, Ziggs is going to be using his bomb just to get away. The gank doesn't turn up anything. This is going to allow Mundo to farm up. He was a little bit behind in terms of CS, but with Nidalee roaming a bit, he should be able to bring that and lead back up. Meanwhile, Kha'Zix has thing. ganked that mid lane. There's the void spikes and the knockback from Ziggs. Bouncing Bomb just missed it. Mega Inferno Bomb hitting the Xerath, but it's not enough damage to take the kill. Jarvan will be left alone to uh, hold that top mid lane. And that's going to be perfect for Blue Side. They're going to be able to put put a little bit of damage onto that, but J4's oh, going to try to jump. engage. There's the jump and the Cataclysm able to take the kill. One more auto attack. There it is. There's the Dragon Strike to take that kill and a double kill onto Jarvan. It's looking really good for him right now. He's looking to pick up a Hex Shrinker, which is going to be really smart because of how much uh, magic damage is going to be coming his way from the Ziggs and the Corky. Yes, and actually, uh, during that fight, it was the perfect opportunity for J4 to jump in. Kha'Zix tanked a little bit too much turret, and right when Kha'Zix jumped out, he's like, I see an opportunity to jump in. He jumped in, Cataclysm just insta-killed Kha'Zix there. And then Ziggs like, oh my gosh, I gotta run away. He's gonna kill me too. And he dies from the uh, Dragon Strike. And again, J4 just knowing when to go in, when not to go in, knowing his damage against the enemy champs, and knowing when he has the advantage in 2v1 scenarios. And it looks like he's making his way top actually right now for a gank. Yeah, it would be fairly difficult to catch at Mundo, and you know what, I kept saying Masochism before, but no, it's actually called Sadism, guys, sorry about that. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's alright, don't worry about it, we all get 
names wrong once in a while. I know I can never say the name hospital at first, but you know, forget about no, names. Names are names. I remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, for some reason, I just could not remember what Leonos E was called. It, it was it is Zenith's Blade, but multiple times throughout that entire game, I'm like, Leona's E going in, and my co is like, it's called Zenith Blade. It's called Zenith Blade. I'm like, oh, I can't remember it. Uh, you know, it, it happens once in a while, right? Like, I know when I first started color casting. I oh, there it is! The Slide Jack on the closet, and he hasn't got taken down by the Cataclysm. And wow, just the ward spotting out Kha'Zix there. Kha'Zix was unaware of it. He was just waiting, and J4 was able to get the jump on him. Again, J4 showing his gank dominance well. King of in the top is showing Again, his baby. The There's a the black drag. The flash coming out for Mudo to keep him alive. The Dragon Strike is going to miss, and the Sadism will keep him alive, and he's gonna heal straight back up as well. Yes, and it looks like Botlane is having a little trouble on Red side now. The damage is getting quite huge, especially since Corky finished his phage. He's going into that Trinity Force, but Ezreal is as well, and. It's all about who finishes his Triforce first right now, and it looks like Ezreal, again, will be able to finish his Triforce first. And if he is able to, he will get his spike just a little bit before Corky does, and that will be huge. Whether it's in fights, whether it's in lane pushing, whatever it is, it's going to have a huge impact in the game. And right now, I was correct, it's an AP Nidalee top, and she did go for that Moralalacon first. Morellon, okay, that was a, okay, I'm just gonna say book for now. Morellon, Morellon, thank you. I still can't say it, but it's okay. She went for that to do some true damage to uh, Mundo, especially when he uses his ulti, which is big, especially now in the top lane fights. There it is, the engage on to Muna from Nili. The sadism is keeping him healthy. One more jump onto him, one more auto attack, but he's healing us so much the spear it's barely missing he's using the cleavers he's gonna have to flash and meanwhile in the bottom lane a double kill onto Jarvan he did manage to pick up Corky and the drum he goes back in onto the Ziggs but he's taking so much damage from Kha'Zix one more auto attack there's the bouncing bomb to take the kill and now Zerat's in a 2v1 situation he's trying to do that he does manage to take the kill onto the Kha'Zix Ezreal he's in such a bad position he's forced to flash away from the bouncing bomb there goes the barrier onto Ziggs auto uh, Zerat using the auto attacks to put some damage on one more attack onto Ziggs. Will secure his death. Will he be able to get it? And there it is. A double kill oh, wow. onto Zeras and a double kill onto Jarvin. This blue team is looking so good right now. Red, red team. Side. Yes. So um, the rotations also by red team are huge here. King in the top is actually pushing down two towers from the looks of it. Nope, he's going to get stopped by Corky actually. And he's going to back off to make it one tower. But wow. Red team on point with the rotations on point <clears throat> with just knowledge of the team. They knew Mundo was busy with Nidalee top, so the teleport was down. And they had the three-man engage before Kha'Zix could react. And they were able to pick up, I believe, Corky still from that fight, as well as Braum. Now, after that, Ziggs and Kha'Zix roamed down, and Zerath was roaming down during that time as well. So yes, they picked up the kill on J4, but then Zerath was able to pick up the kill onto uh, the other two, which is Kha'Zix and Ziggs, and that's getting him going now. He's 2-0, and, oh, and they're going to pick up a Dragon possibly from this now. Unless a steal comes out, no second steal from the Meg Earth. Oh, they're jumping straight onto Kha'Zix. The Cataclysm is locking him in place. They knew he used his jump, so he cannot get away. There's a beautiful Monsu knock them all into her team. And here comes the Zerath ultimate. He's doing so much damage. Rom falls to the Ezreal, and now Corky, he needs to escape. He is so low right now. They did have vision of him because of the Nidalee. He's backing underneath the tower. And it looks like Red Team, they're going to be taking that dragon and the two kills. And they're going to be pretty happy about themselves. But you also have Moonwalk, to remember Mundo, the Mundo. Meanwhile, in that top lane, he's taking down that tower. But Nidalee, with a quick response after, taking, after helping her team take dragon, has made her way there with minimal damage. To her tower and yes um blue team did lose tower but they were able to pick up a constellation prize of top lane tower so very uh very good pressure there they knew that there was a small possibility of taking tower 
and there that's how they use it. There's the smoke from Zerath and the Arcano Pulse to take the kill. Yes, some very nice uh, rotations by Jenna and Zerath. They're showing, flexing their muscles, saying this is how far ahead we are. We don't need to stay in lanes. You guys can't push out. You guys got nothing against us. And look at their items. It's so true. And actually, they all almost on red side, actually. All their kind of carry champs, except their support, have 7k gold. Well, blue side has 6k gold or under. And that's just very impressive how far red team is ahead right now about give or take 5.1 k gold but now the towers are even so we're going to have to see how both uh both red side and blue side are able to take that well a pause is going down the thing is with this with this blue with this red team being so far ahead what blue team might have to do is just can try and get hard engage off or uh, catch catch them out on their rotation. Most people, like as we know, the way to counter uh, poke comps is to just hard engage on them because their team fights are pretty subpar compared. But at, again, they they will want to team fight. But not only are is this red team good at poking, but they're also a pretty decent team fighting composition as well. So much AOE coming out from Zerath and the Ezreal. Nilly is going to be doing so much damage from the backside, and Jarvan will be able to keep them all locked in in a tight circle with the Cataclysm. And again, this was from the early Jarvan pick. Like I said, Jarvan is so good at ganking, and he is insanely great for making map pressure. And we saw it. Look at him. He's 5-2-4. He has more than three quarters of the kills or kill participation right now, and that is proving to be huge for them and you know getting the lanes ahead to early is what made things good but the team fights going down wrong. there goes the super mega inferno bomb knocking nidalee and ezreal back the trophies coming out from mundo trying to get some slows on to the red team and they're just gonna back off so two ultimates being used there's a third one and a kill onto xerath the spear coming out from nidalee looking to catch someone else He's gonna back. He jumped a little bit too far now. Mundo, he's taking a lot of damage. He does have his ultimate up still, so he'll be able to heal back up. Jarvan is on the flank. He's looking to catch someone out. Flag and Drag straight onto Corky. One more auto attack will take the kill. He's gonna be able to get away. The Dragon Strike taking him so much, so low, and the burn onto Kha'Zix will make him fall. And Zix, he's trying to 2v2 right now. Dragon Strike coming out from Jarvan, putting himself underneath that tower. Red team, it's going to be really difficult for them to siege this tower down, especially with Mundo taking so much damage. The Dragon Strike knockup coming out from Jarvan, and he's going to take that kill with the auto attack. And another one straight on to Brom. He is just going balls to the wall, people. Wow. Red team, just, again, knowing when to fight. We saw that blue team teamed up to like, okay, we're a team fight comp. We have the poke to get them down with Corky and Zig. We also have the siege with Mundo and Braum. But they're so far behind right now, it doesn't even matter that red teams just all poke pretty much. They do enough damage and they have the engage with Jarvan, as we can see, to just turn anything into a team fight. They were up a little too close. Jarvan went in, team fight. Everybody died except for Zig's Mundo and Kha'Zix. They rushed up the tower. Team fight, everybody's dead. J4 has 725. He is tanky right now. Tanky to the point where he can fight anybody. And he's looking for more fights, possibly. No, instead he's gonna go back. And I don't think Blue Side wants to stop that J4. Oh, there it is. A flag strike straight out to Corky. One combo from Jarvan, taking him down to half health. And there's the ultimate from Ezreal doing so much damage. The Cataclysm was on to Corky. The burn was not enough to take that kill. And what... Corky and Braum thought they had the advantage, they thought they could catch out the Jarvan, but Corky just taking uh, half of his health being knocked away by the Jarvan, it's just so much for him. Yeah, and J4, again, like I said, J4 is so ahead right now, he, I believe, has the most gold. Whoa, okay, Mundo, what are you fighting right here, buddy, in the mid lane? There's the spear on to Mundo, he gets the long range pounce down. The sadism keeping him somewhat alive, but the ultimate from Zerath will snipe him out. Again, that's true damage. Zerath, 
Oh, he flashes the wall. He was caught out, unfortunately. Uh, again, not true damage. Like I said, it's huge, but the spears are Oh, they're are going also in huge. onto the Nidalee. There goes the rocket. Will she able to flash? She does flash away, but the auto attack from Corky will take that kill. Cataclysm, not up just yet. The bombs from Zig trying to poke at the Jarvan, but the Hex Shrinker is giving him so much magic. Kha'Zix has to jump away. Jarvan just wants to chase this down. He pops the Void Assault to try and get away, but it's too much. Cataclysm almost off cooldown. The Flag and Drag, will it be up in three, two, now it's up. He doesn't get the knockup, but he spots out Kha'Zix. No more Void Assault charges. He does leap away. The ultimate from Ezreal is going to miss, but the Flash Dragon Strike is going to get secure the kill. Sword. Sword. It seems as though... There we go. It seems my uh, co-caster has some uh, technical difficulties, so I will be... I'll be color casting along as lo along as well as uh, play by play casting, guys. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, well, really, like, honestly, what really just happened there was Kha'Zix was a little bit too greedy. Corky did go in onto Nidalee, and he did manage to pick up the kill. But Kha'Zix, he should have just left the moment that happened. Instead, he tried to fight Jarvan, and he fell for that. You could just see the long range, the long chase. Uh, that Jarvan gave because he knows that he can fight no matter what happens and even if he does get overpowered he has so many escape possibilities that he could safely chase. Red Team on the other, meanwhile has taken the dragon that's actually going to be the second dragon for them. They are just constantly controlling that area and the only time that Blue Team had, to had, had an advantage there was when Ziggs was able to steal it with the bouncing bomb. Zera and Red team right now, they're playing true to their comp. They're trying to poke them out. Nothing is hitting though. They desperately need a Banshee, especially on Corky. He's taking so much damage. There goes the ultimate from Ezreal and the captain is on to Brom. The Glacial Fisher is going to get the knockup. Mundo is on the backside, but he's going to fall. No, the Arachnopulse is not going to do anything. Ezreal picking up the kill onto Brom. And here comes the ultimate from uh, Zerath shooting them off. He's not going to be able to pick any kills, but. Ezreal with the double kill, he's managed to take down Brom and Kha'Zix right now. There's no one there to tank up any poke from the rest of Red Team. And they are going to have to give up this tower. Nilly's tanking it up. They're going in onto the Ziggs. The Dragon Strike combo and the Mystic Shot will take down the Ziggs. What a great snipe from the Ezreal. Now they're setting their sights onto that inhibitor tower. Jarvan, he's going to be using his Flag and Drag to try and get away. Nonsoon has been popped, so they're taking a lot of damage. Mundo did not go down just yet, so he's just rolling in. Let's see, maybe Jenna will give up her life. He goes in onto the Mundo, and they do manage to pick up the kill. Jarvan is still not falling. A double kill onto Nidalee. A triple kill onto Nidalee. They're just so dominant. A great turnaround from Jarvan. Was able to catch up Mundo when he was vulnerable. He didn't even have the time to pop his sadism. And he managed to, and he died. And after that, with no, with no one to tank up the rest of the damage, they just got completely overpowered and nearly giving herself a triple kill. We can just see how dominant this red team is right now. Nearly seven, four, and nine. Jarvin eight to eleven. Zerath five, zero, and ten. He has not died just yet. And in the finals match, I, I kind of hope we're going to be seeing a. I kind of. Uh, hope we see some targeted bans uh, towards that mid lane. We did see, uh, I believe, the Fizz and the some some other mid laner getting banned out against Pro 711. But it just it's not enough. It's so difficult to ban against them, and it's so risky to put three bans just in that mid lane because that allows all of the other lanes to get comfort picks, and that will allow them. Uh, Ha to have an easier tar time to try and snowball and win lane. Welcome back, Alex Sword. Not too, not sure what yes. happened right there. I don't know, actually. Uh, some sort of internet connection problem. Obviously, I just fixed that right now, though. But from the looks of things, something, nothing has actually really changed. It looks like Red Side has been able to siege more and There's more, and it looks like the snipes are gonna take down uh, oh, OMG yeah. OP. 
and man, it looks like Red Side is flexing their muscles, so showing their dominance of why they are the number one team in this game right now. Well, Mundo has been caught out. They're trying to take him down. So much damage coming out from this Nidalee. One more spear and auto attack will take that kill from the Kha'Zix. Looking to help his teammate, the, uh, the Monsoon, knocking away Cataclysm from Jarvan, locking down Brom, and he is going to fall to the Jarvan. There goes the Arcane Shift uh, from Ezreal into the enemy base. They're looking to get six to kill onto Kha'Zix. Flag and Dragon, the auto attack, will give him a double kill. And now Red Team, they're pushing down this mid lane, mid lane inhibitor tower. Jarvan should be able to tank it up fairly quickly, and it's going to fall. And now they're working on the inhibitor. Bouncing Bombs not hitting anyone right now. Corky and Ziggs are the only ones alive. They're going to take that inhibitor. They're going to back right off. And this is going to give them a lot more opportunity. They could even go for a Baron after going back. Because of that open inhibitor, they're going to have to send someone to defend that lane. And again, actually, since Red Side is so low, they're going to go back and actually buy up, maybe clear the jungle a little bit more, clear some lanes. But, wow, just again, Red Side showing their muscles. They're not a... They're not afraid at all to pick fights, not even just with their AD care. We saw Ezreal just arcane shift blindly over the side of uh, Blue Side's base, and look at him, he took out Kha'Zix almost single-handedly, and we're seeing how Red Side's able to just turn their kills into more kills and objectives right now, and that's Gary. They are about 15.8k gold ahead. 15.8k gold, and that is... Just a ton of gold, most of it going to their top laner and their AD carry, as well as their jungler. But, man, I I can't even, I'm starstruck for words right now. I can't really think of what boost I can do right now, other than they have to turtle in their face. They have to just not play red side game, which is go for team fights whenever they can. They need to go for picks at this point, and they have to try to get some shut get down gold, maybe on Ezreal, maybe on Xerox, because they haven't even have a death yet. They're playing this game perfectly. And the gold lead is evident in, in the items as well. In that top lane, Mundo only has two completed items. Nilly, she has three. In the jungle, Kha'Zix has the one completed item and he's working on that Randuin. He should be fairly close. Jarvan, he has four, he has three on his side. We have the engage on to the Corky. He's sidestepping the Xerath ultimate and there goes the knockback from Ziggs, keeping him alive. And then back to that, but back to those item builds. Ziggs only has the Athene's Unholy Grail and nothing else. Xerath with three completed items on him. And Corky only has the Triforce and the BF Sword. Ezreal has the Triforce, Blade of the Rune King, and a Last Whisper. This entire red team is just so strong right now. They can play whatever comp they want, and they will win any team fight they want. It seems as though he has disconnected again, guys. So it's back to me. <laughs> Meanwhile, red team, they're pushing down that uh, bottom lane. Jarvan using the offer and the monsoon to keep them alive. Uh, Mundo, he is soloed out away from the rest of his team. The Mega Inferno Bomb will take the kill onto the Nidalee. Xerath is dueling, be dueled out by the Mundo, and he's actually managed to die to him. Corky has been caught out. Jarvan is able to 3v1 right now. Dragon Strike to try and pick up the kill. The tower is on him, but he will not be able to go. No, he does. He does take the kill onto Ziggs. Ezreal is there to help his uh, Janna. One more auto attack will take the kill. And that was such a completely messy team fight from Red Team. They did manage to get ahead. Uh, four for one, uh, four for three, five for three right now. But still, they really did not play that correctly. Janna went in way too early. And Jarvan was only able to get a lockdown on one person. And Nidalee, she just got blown up immediately. She wasn't able to take anyone down. They did take the tower, but a lot of extra gold was given away to blue team and you know I was talking about how they can play essentially any comp they want at this point but they can do that but they can't just throw engages out like that a really messy engage for red team it did work out for them but they need to be careful now because uh, eventually in about 10 minutes death timers uh, the gold lead won't matter it's all about death timers and if they get, if blue team is able to get a catch out onto anyone of red team, then they could easily lose because of, uh, because of how long they have to wait 
for their ally to come back. And look at that, Nidalee with one spear onto Corky, putting him down to half health. She is so powerful at this point. Welcome back, yes. Sword. Thank you, sir. I do not know what's up with my internet today, but <laughs> we're back in game. And it seems like from what you're talking about, it looked like the blue side got a little bit of kills. And you are right. In the about 45 minute mark, gold won't matter. It's all going to be about death timers. But Nidalee wants some kills right now. She might get caught out for almost nothing. Oh, she and she is going to get caught out. Wow. Again, they, they are just playing really sloppily right now. It's like this is an entirely different team. After they got a decisive uh, decisive lead, they're slowly starting to give it away. Nilly is win in the bottom lane while the rest of her team was in the top side. They could have taken a, dr a Baron off of that because they had vision on Ziggs and Corky, but they just didn't decide to, they didn't want to pull the trigger. Now with Ezreal and Janna in that mid lane, it's leaving Jarvan and Zerath in the top lane alone. They could have been collapsed upon, but blue team, they don't want to push that event. They don't want to push uh, their luck. Ezreal going really hard onto Mundo. Just so much damage uh, onto him. The sadism hasn't been popped up, but Janna has, to, has been caught out by the uh, Kha'Zix. They're pushing down that top lane tower. Ezreal, he's just been untouched. He's standing in one place. And he's like not been touched by anyone. The Kha'Zix doesn't want to go in. And no poke has been hitting him whatsoever as well. It's because they're scared of the engage afterward. They had J4 waiting in the wing. They had the stun ready, the arcane shift ready. They were, they had their hands on those keys just in case something happened. And right now, it looks like red team finally have established each other. And like, hey, guys, we have to do, do this now before things are too late. We're gonna push down mid, and then we're gonna go to top lane. And There's right the now, straight out to Corky, and the Valkyrie misses. She gets blown up immediately by the uh, the Jarvan. And there goes Kha'Zix straight in on to Ezra. He's trying to pick up the kill, but the auto attacks are doing too much damage. Jarvan, he is tanking up everything that this blue team has to offer. The Spear's coming up from Nidalee, and there goes the knock up onto him. Void Spikes catching out the Jenna. Howling Gale will knock up the Ziggs before the bouncing blade will eight, bouncing bomb will lock him down and it looks as though Zerath has managed to pick up a kill onto Kha'Zix. There comes the right of the arcane trying to pick up a kill but it's not going to happen. Kha'Zix and Corky have fallen of red team, a blue team, but this red team doesn't want to push an advantage. Jarvan is able to tank up these towers and with no, the only main damage source uh, that is Ziggs now, they just don't want to do anything. They're going to take these, they're going to take the jungle boss Baron is a high, uh, uh, a highly profitable choice right now, but they just don't want to go for it. It's very weird, yes, in that sense that they're not deciding to go for that. But right now, from the looks of things, it seems as if they're just waiting for something. And I don't know exactly what they're waiting for. They could be waiting for, uh, I don't know, they could be waiting for just a perfect team fight happening or a, an ace. Maybe they don't want to touch that Baron at all, but it's weird to me that they don't want to touch that Baron and just go for the end game right now. I don't know if there's any stats that they might be looking to improve, or they might be showing the enemy team, hey, like this is how strong we are. It doesn't matter how late the game goes. We still can win. But you are right. This gets very dangerous the later this game goes, because yes, uh, red team side looks very strong, but the pata or the potassal the potential of blue side when they have full items compared to red side in team fights is huge the assassinations from Kha'Zix the burst damage from Ziggs the tanky but damage side of Corky as well as Braum and Mundo being very huge tanky CC kind of tanks and if red side doesn't like end soon it's going to be very 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 not in their favor when team fights come around or not even just when team fights come around there is not that much to really siege left like yeah there's their base yeah there's a few inhibs but if it gets to the point in the late game where they can just run up and the tanks can engage there's there's no point for that there's zero point to that right now Blue team, red team needs to be careful. Once they have six items, they're not going to get any stronger. And if they if then if they allow blue team to catch up, then it's anyone's game. It really is. They're going towards that bottom lane side. The mid lane is still open. The submarines are going to be coming in at a steady rate, but they're clearing it out fairly well. 
they're gonna have to send someone to the mid lane to clear it out now so hopefully red team should be able to take this tower but blue team they're just not giving it up fairly easily and those spears are landing on perfect targets mundo he's trying to avoid the spears for his team when he really should be eating them so much damage onto mundo he and there goes the Cataclysm, will allow him to take the kill, Xerath right of the Arcade, picks up one kill for himself, Void Spikes coming out, no Jarvan trying to catch out the Ziggs, he almost walked into the Fountain. They're gonna ignore the bottom lane, and now they're going for the Nexus Tower, the first one is, take, is taken out fairly quickly, Ezreal jumping in using the uh, Arcane Shift, and the Flagon drag by, Jarvan will allow Xerath uh, to pick up a kill onto Corky, but this game is over already. No, wait, the inhibitor responds. They can't end it already. Yeah, this but is with like the, the death saving. Timing. This the death timer is oh, a well, little that's... too long still, though. So it looks like <laughs> Red Side is still actually going to be able to end the game. So GG, well was... played both teams. I was so excited for a second. I didn't notice the death timers. And I was excited that blue team would have had a comeback right now, like to get an like get an ace, um, with their nexus having about like 200 health left. I was so excited yeah. for that. I know. I like when you see that, it's just like huge. But like you said, the death timers in the late game they are pretty long. But not just that. Uh, you did ask me, Trank K, how will he do since his Lee Sin got banned out? King in the top, how will he do since two of his main champions got banned in the top lane? Well, here's your answer. They completely destroyed, uh, Not maybe not King in the top that w much, but look at Trent K. 15 kills, 15 assists. 30 kill participation to their 40 altogether kills. That is more than three quarters of the way participation. And we just saw how much again participated in the team and he did so much whether it was setting up a gank getting kills for himself catching people out of position but it's it's very impressive about how you know how well they did especially since we're like I said these are lane bullies that are supposed to bully out these champions but tables got turned from J4 being able to do such early ganks as well as the, the lane bullies had no effect on these lanes. They they literally got moved to the side and like, doesn't matter your lane bullies, we can play in our own favor. We can play to our comfort champs, and that's what's gonna win us the game. All right, guys, we are gonna take a quick break as we wait for the next match to get ready. I hope you guys stay tuned. We shall return. Peace for now, guys. <laughs> 